The entire country is aware of climate change and taking steps finally to mitigate problems that we have and will have to come. But for us here in Hawaii, we need to be more aware and more proactive. Why? Well, climate change is affecting our oceans more than any other areas. Joining us this morning is Dr. Stephen Bushinger. Dr. Bushinger is the professor and chair of the Department of Atmospheric Sciences at the University of Hawaii and has devoted more than three decades researching the structure of the atmosphere and how climate change will affect us. Good morning, Dr. Bushinger. How are you today? Good morning, Chevy. Glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I study, uh, of course, I study climate change, but I, I always want to bring the experts, the guys that know the, and gals that know the top, uh, the best information about climate change, because we're in the center of it. So we were talking the other day, and with climate change, where does all this global warming, where does it go, most of it? Well, it turns out that as the atmosphere has more carbon dioxide in it, that, that traps the heat from uh, the earth, and that is uh, radiated back to down to the planet and it causes the surface to become warmer. That's why we call it global warming. But it turns out that the ocean absorbs 95% of that excess heat. So the ocean is the place where, uh, if, you, if you will, the global warming is uh, most pronounced. And that was the, I was looking at your presentation that uh, you showed me, and that was the one that stood out for me. It's kind of an eyebrow razor where it's like that much goes into the oceans, and people ask, well, where does it else go? It goes into the Arctic sheets or the atmosphere or into the land, but the water holds that warmth a lot longer uh, than the land can. So you also told me that we set a record this year for average global sea surface temperatures for 2023, and I thought right away, I'm like, well, we're, we're kind of neutral conditions, not even in El Nino. How, how does that strike? you that that happened uh, during a neutral condition well it's it's uh, definitely a reflection of global warming uh, and it's troubling because the sea surface provides you know the the energy if you will the water vapor that we have in the atmosphere which drives storms so uh, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong here, Dr. Bushinger, but, uh, you know, the logic uh, is uh, that tropical cyclones here in the Pacific, the reason we don't get as many as they do just to the south of us is because as you go farther north, the waters are cooler. So when tropical storms are on a path to Hawaii, if they are, they usually dissipate, run into wind shear, or they run into cooler waters. But... That may be changing. Uh, it, it, are you seeing in your research that uh, that tropical cyclones are are moving farther north, and that could impact Hawaii more? Not only with the number of tropical storms, but the intensity of them. Yeah, that's an excellent question. It's uh, difficult to answer because the number of hurricanes that we get in the Central Pacific is so small. But if you look globally at all the hurricanes, which is about 80 hurricanes per year, or 80 tropical cyclones per year, because they call them typhoons back in the West Pacific, if you look at them all, uh, you do find that there is a, a statistically significant gradual shift northward, uh, and again, away from, I should say, away from the equator. So northward in the northern hemisphere and southward in the southern hemisphere. Mm. Uh, but for, as I said before, the, in the Central Pacific, our hurricane count is so low that the uh, the jury's still out. You know, give it another 50 years and we'll have the answer. I, I, it's I, a concern. Yeah, people say, you know, well, doesn't don't you have enough data? I mean, as far as really getting data from hurricanes, when the satellite uh, age came in in the, in the 60s, that really amped up the data. And we need we need decades of data to prove these things. And and, and with everybody being so aware of global change now, or global warming, climate change, uh, we're really studying the data like you are. And uh, to see trends like that, though, so you see a trend, you can't be definitive, but that's still a little bit concerning that, I mean, if, if that warming goes a little bit to the the north you know we may be in the path of it i know we're so tiny out here but i mean we've been hit before but uh, maybe the chances of it are greater i'm sure we'll be talking to you again about this uh, in the future dr bruce we really appreciate you joining us this morning um, thank you very much for having me on